And uh, today I wanted to talk about preparing for clinicals as a nurse practitioner student. Um, this is a question that comes up so frequently and I see lots of good advice, but I think there are some things that I've seen missing off the lists that after talking to so many students, doing lots of counseling and mentorship, there are things that people are setting themselves up um, for failure in their clinical so quickly. Um, and it's things that I'm having to undo with them later on, things I'm having to go back, like this is how you have to approach your preceptor about this, that, and the other. But starting yourself off on a good, good foot with your clinicals is so important. Um, one thing that I say when you start your clinicals, any clinical new rotation, you really want to try to get in to see that preceptor before the first day so that you guys can meet and talk about what your expectations are. Uh, I think one of the biggest things that I feel like I'm having to help students undo is setting realistic expectations with their preceptors. Some preceptors have it in their mind for some reason that you're just going to shadow them or that you're going to see every single one of their patients by yourself on day one. And so there has to be a balance and a, and a set expectation when you begin that clinical rotation of how many patients you're going to see per day, how's that going to look, how are you going to set up and do your case study or your, your case presentations to your preceptors between patients? And you want to have goals. So if it's your first clinical, it is a lot of following your preceptor around. My first rotation was called assessment. And I think it was 45 or 90 hours. And it was a lot of just mimicking what my preceptor did. So they would do the visit or do a, some, do a step or assessment or something like this. And I would do it right behind them until I got those things routinely down. So in your first clinicals, you're wanting to repeat uh, and yes, it's going to take a little bit longer. If it's your first clinical, your preceptor needs to know it's your first clinical and that you are going to be doing a lot of like following them around and tailing them, but you need to be hands-on like day one. Hands-on day one is very important. So you're hands-on with your patients, you're following them around and you're shot, you're doing little every little thing that they're doing, you're doing, listen to this, listen to this, look in this ear, look in this ear. And so you're doing everything that that they're doing. So Meet with your preceptor before you start that rotation. Set what your goals are going to be so that you can get to those goals. So you can, your end goal by the time you get done with clinicals is being able to see 15 patients independently in a day, if not more. But on your last day of school, you should be seeing 15 patients independently because the next day when you get hired, you're going to be seeing 15 patients or more independently. Um, if you're going into primary care, orientation is just not there. You get two weeks of orientation, which is mostly just to get you up to date with policies, procedures, computers, software, uh, things like that in the flow of the practice. But um, when you're going into primary care, uh, the expectation is, is you're stepping in prepared to do that. Uh, and they're not trying to get, hopefully, they're not trying to get you to see 25, 30 in your first year. But you, when you step onto the floor on day one, being able to see 15 patients is, is going to put you ahead of the game. So that's what your goal should be by your last clinical day of your whole program. So how do we kind of piece from that to day one? I'm hands-on with my patient on my very first day of clinicals. And I'm just mimicking everything that my preceptor does, starting to build pathways. Okay, this is what a ear looks like that's got it. Um, an ear infection. Okay, this is the order in which my preceptor is doing things. She's consistent. She's doing things in the same way each time. And so getting those pathways developed during your health assessment class is very important. Then your next clinical rotation, you should start wanting to see a couple of patients by yourself and or even just doing the appointment with the preceptor in the room but not them doing things first. So you can kind of try to figure out what order am I going to do things in and what kind of clinical decision making I'm going to be doing. And it's even okay to just, you know, be constantly kind of looking to the preceptor and I would do this next. <laughs> and they're like, yes or no, or help re-guide you and that kind of thing. And so that, again, the first one is follow them around, do absolutely everything they're doing. The second one is, okay, let me start trying to build my own thing here. Let me start to play around with it with someone watching me or just doing a couple of visits by myself per day. Again, meeting with that preceptor, setting those expectations before you start the rotation. Then you should start being able to go into like doing women's health or pediatrics rotations if you're in family practice or an FNP. And same thing, a lot of starting again with, okay, with the women's health, doing literally everything they're doing. When comfortable, starting to do paps and pelvics after you've watched a good number. And my preceptors, uh, both my preceptors in grad school highly recommended only doing student paps and pelvics on women who had already had children. Um, because a young woman who is potentially a virgin or has never had children, it's definitely a more scary thing for them and it can be more painful for them. So you want someone who's experienced doing those. 
and practicing um, and being conscientious and gentle and slow and taking your time on women who had already had children. And that was kind of the, the recommendation that I received. And then with pediatrics, again, you're kind of stepping into a new ground. You're following the preceptor around. You are copying everything that they're doing and very, very quickly um, transitioning to doing things on your own there. And then so by your third or fourth clinical rotations or your last ones, your practicums, you need to be seeing every other patient independently. And so a really good way that I've seen a lot of preceptors do this is they go see a patient, you go see a patient, you meet out in the hallway, you give your case presentation and with your all the way SOAP going down and doing those four things. So doing your subjective, this is Mr. Jones. Um, he's 65 year old male. He's presenting with this complaint on my assessment. I saw this. I ordered this POC and we, we did this. I'm assuming he has got this and this is the plan that I would like to do. So going through your SOAP, you can use note cards, anything like that that you need because some people really panic and get tongue tied during their soap notes uh, to their preceptors. And you may actually know the answer and you may know what you be want, you're wanting to do, but it's not coming off to your preceptor. They're not able to judge if you're thinking in a, in a linear pattern and if you're going to make good clinical decisions. So if you can get your SOAP down um, when you're presenting that patient, it's going to help everything go a lot faster for everyone. So then you come together, have your other discussion. Um, you guys can go in together or you can go in individually. It's just preceptor preference and present the plan to the patient of what you're going to do and then repeat. Provider goes and sees a patient, you go see a patient, meet in the hallway, discuss, discuss. And this allows them to keep up their flow because if they actually have to go in with you with every single patient throughout the day, they are going to get slowed down. So this is a really good pattern as you get towards the end of your clinical rotations to um, be able to see patients, keep up, they are able to keep up and you're able to get what you need. So it's a big balance of that. Again, setting the expectations early so that both of you know what it's going to look like, what your what your goal is. And coming in with suggestions, because some people may have never precepted anybody before, or just expect you to shadow them. And that is the worst. If your preceptor will only let you shadow them, you're done. You fire them. <laughs> you move on to the next one. Um, because you're going to waste your time if you're shadowing somebody. It's It's got to be hands-on from day one. So, um, And yes, you can fire a preceptor. I'll talk about that on a different night um, in a very uh, very general manner in order to maintain professionality amongst our uh, amongst our group with any anecdotes, stories, or personal experiences that I have. We'll talk about that very generally and how to handle those things professionally. I'll probably make up some stories just so, um, that are similar to other stories I've heard in order to keep that very, very general. Other things, other than dealing with your preceptor, setting up the day in a specific way, setting the expectations with the preceptor, I'm telling you, you have to set those expectations before day one with them or you will both be in a different place. Like they'll think you're way ahead of where you're supposed to be and this is your first clinical. And they need to know where you are in your program, what your goals are, everything. So another thing you can do is on that day when you go in and meet with them um, before, is also you wanna familiar yourself with the clinic itself. If you have the opportunity to do a little tour of the clinic, where's everything located? Um, what kind of protocols and procedures? So if you wanna do a day that's not one of your clinical hour days, and you're going in and you're meeting them and you want to like walk around for a couple hours, do a shadow that day, that's fine. But as soon as your clinical hours start, you need to be hands-on. Another thing is you want to keep a little book in your pocket, notepad, note card, whatever. The way that I learned is every time I saw a word or a diagnosis or a medication that I had never seen before in somebody's chart or mentioned during an appointment, I would write it down on that card and then go look it up or make sure I asked the preceptor about it once we got out of the room. Um, so that I could make sure I was learning and attaching these medications and diagnoses and things with an actual patient that I had just seen. And that really makes things stick into the long-term memory better. And so that's massively important to make sure you have paper in your pocket. You also wanna make sure that you have whatever equipment's necessary for that facility, get a good stethoscope. You want a Littman. You really want a Littman cardiology if you can swing it. A three or a four, threes are a little cheaper, fours are a little better. I have a three, my my brother who's a physician has a four um, and his is better than mine. I'll say that, but they're both good. They're not $20 uh, MDI one that I had in nursing school. that was like hot pink and my pre preceptor like held it up against hers. And the pink one that I had had like this really, really thin tubing and it was really, really, really long. And hers was really short and thick. And she said this short and thick stethoscope tubing allows for the sound to get 
to the ear better. And it's so much more important as a clinician to have that tubing um, that goes to the ear really, really good um, because you're listening for murmurs and other things like that. So invest in a really, really good stethoscope. Uh, be professional and, and dress professionally. Uh, some preceptors will ask you to wear things like scrubs. I say go for the business casual and your medium length coat. So short coat, nursing student, long coat, physician, NP student, medium length. Okay. So medium length coat, um, dress professionally and wear it uh, unless you're asked not to. If you're asked to wear something different, fine. A lot of people want to be like, I just want to wear my scrubs. It's what I'm used to in nursing. But we need, I think it's important to differentiate and to to stand out. And you're you're coming with a you're in a master's degree program, you're trying to be a provider. Um, so dressing professionally. If a site asks you to wear scrubs, do it. If you're working in like wound care, do it. Uh, pediatrics, no white coat, of course, because you don't want to terrify kiddos. Every single time I had a kid appointment when I was working at Minute Clinic, I would take it off and hang it on the hook and just wear light clothing and hi, because I wanted to look like a normal average person that's not going to give them a shot, <laughs> even if I was. Uh, so that's my two cents on uh, dress and dressing professionally, because you are representing our profession and we want to make sure we're doing a good job of that. And then the last tip, of course, is making sure that you are allowing yourself adequate rest. It is so hard being in NP school and having clinicals and trying to work and having um, potentially a home life as well while you're balancing all these things. So making sure that you're not putting your clinical rotations right up against a shift. Find a way to make it work. Your clinical rotations are so valuable. Textbooks are great. Classes are great, lectures are great, but there is something about being in the clinical setting that is so important. You do not waste an hour of it. You do as many as you can. 500 is the minimum. You don't do the minimum. You do as many as you can find placement for. It helps you stand out amongst other new graduates when you're applying for positions, if you have done twice or three times as many hours as somebody else. Um, it is, uh, so if you, yeah, if you've done more hours, you're going to feel better prepared. You're going to have less imposter syndrome. It's just going to go better for you. So do as many hours as you can. Uh, do not waste a single one of them. If you have a bad preceptor, try as quickly as you can to find a different preceptor. We don't want to waste your time. Sometimes you can learn. You can make you can make a bad situation good. Sometimes you can learn things from these clinicians. Oh, I don't want to do that. I definitely don't want to do it that way. I don't want to handle pro patient care that way. Uh, so... Anyways, I was wrapping up with talking about making sure you're practicing good sleep and eating well and not putting shifts right next to your clinical hours. So go ahead and take those tips, prepare for your clinical rotations, and make the most of your learning experience. Bye.